Welcome to the Monday, January the 3rd, 2022. Happy New Year, everyone. To the meeting of the Design Review Committee in Montpelier, I will let members introduce themselves and staff. Benjamin Cheney. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. Okay, we have everyone here. I, at this point, we can let staff Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right, so a lot of this is for anybody who's watching via ORCA and wants to join in on the meeting. Um, I'm going to share my screen here for them so that they can find how to do it if they need to. Um, all right. Um, so for those, oops, I don't think I brought my normal cheat sheet. Okay, so for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, um, you can participate in tonight's design review committee, committee meeting via the Zoom platform following this link here, or by calling into the meeting using this phone number, and then you'll have to plug in this meeting ID. So even if we're partway into the meeting and you suddenly realize that there's an application you're interested in and you have a comment on, you can log into the meeting while it's in process um, and then we'll we'll be able to see you pop up and let you have comments um, if you're anyone is trying to access the meeting and is having problems please email me at this phone number at this email address down here um, i'll have my email up throughout the meeting um like i said a minute ago i forgot my little cheat sheet of my spiel but i think i can get most of it um if you are on via zoom we ask that you please stay muted when you're not talking. Um, we don't have any members of just the general public on tonight so far. Um, it looked like it was all applicants, um, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about people raising their hands to make comments. Um, but we do ask that you wait to be recognized by the chair before you speak, um, and, and Steve will guide you all through that process. Um, if you um, are having any issues with the Zoom interface, please use the chat function for that. Um, however, please restrict your chat use to those issues for technical issues or, or other, other non-substantive issues. Um, if you have a substantive question or something that comes up, please do raise your hand um, either physically or using the Zoom raise hand button and Steve will call on you um, or I'll, one of us will flag it for him and we'll We'll get that all working. Um, if I find out via email that members of the public are trying to access this meeting and they can't, um, we will have to continue this meeting to a time and place certain. I will now hand this back over to the chair. Thank you. Unless anyone has anything to add at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I move. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. You're, Eric, you're muted. <laughs> I've heard. I'm in a very quiet room. I apologize for not being down there tonight, but we have company. No, no that's worries. okay. They won't, they're not going to participate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have a we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Benjamin Cheney. And Steve Everett. So we'll go to the first applicant. For four London Street, Montpelier Property Management for Bent Nails Bistro. And is someone here from Bent Nails Bistro? Yes, I'm here, Aaron Ingham. Hello. Okay. First, first question before we go through the review is Did you get the engineer's report? No, no engineer's report. Should we move forward without the engineer's report or is that a moot point? Um, I mean, that's for the, the 
Chris Lumbra requested the engineer's report for the building permit um, for the awning. So the design review committee's input on everything else within their purview, I think, you know, unless, unless the design review committee feels that at least for the awning, they need the, the engineer's report to make a decision on that awning. Um, I, I, I could not approve it without an engineer's report because I think the fastening is, I, I've dealt with buildings and Ben, you sure have to, uh, the, the fastening is insufficient to hold the snow load particularly uh, and even what's up there. I don't disagree that the fastening or the sort of structure feels um, minimal at, um, and so I guess your point, Eric, is that um, that's not a complete design for you to be able to uh, evaluate until you see how, what other fastening may or may not be required. If, if we approved it, it would be certainly be conditional on the engineer's report, as far as I could see. I mean, uh, I don't know, you know, what the materials are, the braces, uh, what, how heavy that tubing is, but the, the fastening is uh, uh, to the wall, as near as I can figure out is with, uh, three nails and two number eight or 10 screws. Uh, the, I did a little research. The hood is from a 57 Chevy V8. And it's amazing what you can find on the internet, but it weighs approximately 65 pounds and is uh, about 20 fair square feet. So it could, uh, uh, the snow load code is 50 pounds a square foot. So theoretically that hood could be required to support five, uh, a thousand pounds. Yeah. And, and I Just, am reasonably certain those fastings would not allow, would not hold that. It just seems sort of the cart before the horse to approve this if they have to be based on engineering if they have to propose a different mounting system for it, which would mean they would have to come back again to have well, approval. Can I, can I say something? Look, why don't we just take the uh, the awning right off the, the table then? I'll just take the thing down because uh, to get an engineer to come, I, I, I you know, I, we just can't afford that. So I think what we're more interested in are the other things that we've proposed that do not need engineering so is there a way that we can can approve those things and I will just take the awning down? I, I think the same, I would have the same concerns with hanging anything on the building that the fastenings be uh, secure and appropriate for the weight, the wind loads and, and all of that. And, uh, I also have a concern with uh, uh, fastening and penetrating the building's uh, uh, skin of screws, uh, which are quite likely to rot around, around them because they're not protected from the weather. The other concern is the proposed location of the shark on the side of the building is right under the eave. And if snow load comes off of that, it's going to destroy both the, uh, particularly if there's any ice that comes off, it's going to destroy the sculpture as well as tear it off the building. Um, I, again, I think it, if you want to propose anything, I think an engineer needs to look at it at its location as well as the attachment. And again, whether we approve or disapprove the application, if anything needs to be changed, you'd have to come back anyway. So I'm a little I mean, concerned that we don't, I mean, I, while I agree with, about making sure things don't fall off buildings and um, hurt people, I'm not certain that we apply that same standard to 
a lot of various different signs that we, you know, that go up that I guess I'm thinking back to um, the Buchspieler sign, and that was basically a precedent that that thing was already there, but I don't yes. know that we asked. Oh, we did, we, we did, Ben. I, I remember talking about that and the securing and making sure somebody checked those fastenings for the uh, to the wall. And I mean, again, and again, most of the overhanging signs have a very minimal uh, area that's subject to weather issues. Yep. It's certainly vertical uh, weather issues like snow and snow and ice coming off of roofs. Yep. And I know that snow and ice comes off of this roof here because I was on oh, the I other hope. side of the street one day when probably about 400 pounds of snow and ice came off that all in one shot. Oh, and they closed the sidewalk over there because it, Yes, I, I'm aware that that is certainly. I'm more just checking in, like, as what is our sort of your jurisdiction, sort of yeah, responsibility. Yeah. Um. So the I mean, there is a requirement, and it's more for signs, but where that the support structures for them still need to um, be compatible with the building. So in, in, you know, especially for the awning concerns about the supports for it and, and how it's fastened to the building, I think kind of come into play, even though that's normally talked about with, with regards to signs, um, with regard to, um, you know, if you're talking, you know, damage to historic or character, historic materials, character defining features, that something that comes into, you know, the actual safety of it isn't really the design review committee's purview. Um, that's something that I'm in conference with both Department of Public Works about and with um, Chris Lumbra, specifically with Chris Lumbra about the awning and DPW more with the shark. Um, I, I, I do think though that if we have a concern about those issues that we should raise Yep. No, I think having mm -hmm. that on the record that those oh, are concerns of yours are definitely can... things to say. I'm not sure that it goes to the actual how many of the um, criteria that you look at for design review that those go to. Um, you know, the... Okay, I mean, we, we can always go through the criteria mm -hmm. based on the application and then vote on that and move it forward one way or the other. And it you might need to have you know, if there's particular aspects of the application that come up, whether it's the octopus or the shark or the awning, different parts um, that you're more concerned with, with regard to each of these criteria, I would just make sure to point those can out. I, can I also just add, um, the shark, for example, has been hanging on the outside of my gallery in Marshfield for three plus years now. Uh, in the same type of position under under awning and in the weather. So uh, I would say it's more than proven that it that it's not going anywhere. Those things I take very seriously. And I, I realize this is not going to affect your decision, but the awning was tested also at my place um, before I ever thought about putting it up. I'm not into putting people's uh, safety at risk simply to display my artwork. Um, so I didn't want you to feel like I'm just trying to do that because uh, I was actually hoping to create a safer environment because that front step ledge is horrible the way it was and very dangerous without an awning and a railing. So um, I was actually trying to do the opposite of what um, you're thinking it's doing apparently. So just I just out of curiosity, I assume your your studio is that spot on right on Route Two there with the penguin and uh, yes, yes, cool. great. great. Yeah, I love driving by there. Nice spot there. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, you should stop in sometime. The inside is impressive, also. <laughs> yeah, cool. I like that penguin a lot. Can I put that on the side of the building? <laughs> <laughs> 
might be nice over the river just in case right, exactly. went it is a boat it's an old boat. <laughs> okay. okay what i'm what we'll do then was we'll we can move forward and i will just review the criteria and then based on each one i will get some feedback from the other two committee members uh, about what your feelings are what what or, what, are, what are we looking at the uh shark where we look the the application is for the whole thing it's for the railings the hood the shark the octopus it's a, the the snake on the side uh the whole thing so i'll go through and any reaction you have would be to all of the above all of them collectively because that's what the application is for not for each individual piece one at a time but all collectively so for all projects in the design review district, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings <clears throat> shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a historic property shall be avoided. Uh, there's no removal. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced, where the severity of deterioration, there's no deterioration here existing. Um, number, and C, any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting shall not be approved so committee members what is your feeling regarding that is that acceptable or unacceptable i say it's unacceptable uh for a couple of reasons one is that uh the uh, uh the hood certainly obscures some uh, distinctive architectural features and i think one could say the uh same thing about the other two uh, pieces. I'm concerned that the fastening can I, is actually doing damage to the building uh, for the uh, reason that uh, the screws that are out in the weather like that, they're not stainless steel, I don't believe. And in any case, they're going to uh, attract water and allow rotting. Uh, the, that will the, the first thing that will happen is the screws will lose the, some of their strength, uh, and uh, there it's it is damaging the historic fabric of the building. And Ben, what is your take? Uh, I'm curious about the there was in that um, description about craftsmanship, and it was more about the craftsmanship of the building than it was what was being applied to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's saying that they, they need to be preserved. Yeah. And then the other question was the the exterior design shall be in alterations of existing buildings should be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. So do you find the changes compatible with the existing building or any other buildings in that area. I, I definitely have a problem with that. Uh, uh, partly because uh, take the, the shark, for example, uh, it's uh, one of the characters characteristics of the building is the clabbered siding, uh, the fenestration patterns, uh, and this is uh, large enough to and distracting enough to obscure uh, and distract from that characteristic. I mean, I disagree with with that. I feel like these are these are art pieces that are being attached to a building that are not um, permanently altering the building. I think it's similar to the the murals that have been painted on the on the brick building that they are large enough and would distract uh from the character defining of 
of those buildings and are removable if you're talking about the shark in that way or the octopus in that way. I feel like these are uh, not permanent uh, applications to this building, but are sort of art pieces that could be taken down. Uh, I, I, I like the art pieces uh, as, as art pieces. I, I, I like uh, art pieces and I have several myself that are made out of found materials. I think it's very creative and everything. I think it is, uh, I just uh, don't think pieces as large as this uh, uh, are compatible with the historic character of the building. And I guess I would have to agree with Eric for the same reason in terms of compatibility with the existing building. And that's a very old building that's been preserved, gone to great extent to be preserved that was originally on Main Street. It was actually moved back to its current location years ago. And uh, it has a lot of interesting features and I'm not sure that the artwork as applied Again, I'm looking at that alterations consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties. And I would have to agree with Eric, but I could just write down that it was two to one. Yep. Number two, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. This one typically is more to do with, say, an addition on a building, but I didn't want to say that this one was completely not applicable to this. Um, because it, it's not something that says that it can only be applied to additions. This is this is where the design review guidelines that the Historic Preservation Commission is coming up with will, I think, help when it comes to interpreting how to apply these. We're just not there yet. Okay, so if any new development has to do with additions to the building, then this one would not be applicable. Right, but it's a little fuzzy. Okay. I, I think the... Uh... The, the hood over the doors is could be considered an addition to the building. Uh, the other things, uh, maybe not. I mean, I guess I feel like it would take 15, 20 minutes to pull that thing down if that was like, and I guess like anything that I imagine that is like an actual addition to the building is like deeply built into the building okay then we can just make a call that that's not applicable in this particular application yeah yeah i'm good with that Down on the bottom, number five, alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible. This and again, is really this is just for the railing. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. My apologies. This is really just for the railing. Okay. Yeah, the railings are fine, as far as I'm concerned. I have no problem with the railings. Neither do I. Okay. So number five is acceptable for the railing only. And again, it's a safety feature. Number 12, architectural features. Architectural features including, but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building.
Eric, would you call that applicable in this particular case? Yes. Okay. Because I, I think the uh, uh, the hood covers up the entablature to the uh, for the door. Right. And it's uh, it, you know it it isn't uh, the materials are not compatible. Uh, And Ben, what is your take on it? Um, well, it kind of goes back to the like, how built in is this? If this was like a built in permanent fixture to the building, I would agree with Eric that this is not um, compatible with that building. If it is a piece of art that is attached to the building that also happens to keep the rain off the step, then then I don't quite feel the same way. And again, the summation of that, of number 12 is architectural features shall be considered in the alteration of a building. And again, it doesn't have to be a permanent, something more permanent in the sense of an overhang that, uh, or of uh, an enclosure or some kind of a roof support that's meant to be permanent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with Eric on this one as well for the same reasons. But I'll let you make your call. Yeah, I view it as a as a piece of art that is applied to the building. Okay. So I'd call that two in favor and one not in favor. Yeah. Well, two. Two not in favor. Two not in favor. Yeah. I'm sorry, two not in favor, one in favor. I think and none then, of the other pieces of art we have uh, approved uh, conceal architectural features at all. Um, right. I think it's a great addition to downtown to have our art around, but I mean, I, our uh, our um, part of our design review charge is to protect the historic buildings, uh, and being an historic preservation person, I take that very seriously, and don't want to see anything done. Uh, that damages historic buildings, art or otherwise. Well, I, I have to take a little offense to that, Eric, because uh, it seems memories are a bit short. The amount of time and money we've put into that building to not only preserve it, but make it better than it's been the last couple decades from what I'm told. So uh, we're certainly not trying to do anything to harm the building. In that respect, uh, we've brought that place back inside and outside all three floors and the basement actually four floors uh, to a place that it has not seen in, in decades. Um, so I think that that should be at least uh, put I, on I, the record. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing to the building, but that doesn't mean that an individual part of it, what you're doing uh, it, it does not have the potential to cause damage. Uh, that's, uh, it's not the whole, you know, the whole idea of reusing the building is great. I don't know everything you've done inside, but uh, uh, I think it, it, it's great. It's just that uh, the art proposals particularly, I think have the potential to do damage to the building and are incompatible, uh, particularly the hood. With the well, to counter your 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 uh, your stainless steel screws can be used. They can be rubberized and caulked. So those those arguments don't really that could be easily solved as far as that kind of uh, damage possible damage done. So uh, I, again, I'm not exactly sure how those pieces could damage the building otherwise. Um, they haven't damaged my building. Like I said, they've been on them for years. So 
um, it's it's tested, and uh, I, I know it's not going to sway your your opinion. Obviously, you where you are, but I, I have to say that for the record, it's, it's you know I don't I don't do these things very easily. I know what I'm doing, and 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 can't just put something on the side of a building and hope it stays up. Uh, I, I do have a little more skill than that. So uh, I just hope that it's taken into account before your final vote. Well, I, I appreciate your view and, and uh, that uh, I, I, I do like to see art and creative things being done with buildings downtown. Uh, it's not, not, not that part of it. Well, maybe, maybe this will turn into me just asking, is there any place at all then on the building that you would approve something? Maybe we go from that angle because uh, this seems like um, a time waste for everyone to keep trying to uh, uh, doing that. So I would take your advice on that. You could just tell me no, if, if that's going to be your, your thoughts around the whole building, but uh, I would certainly like your opinions on that. Before we go backwards, back up to the earlier criteria, the last one that staff suggests not applicable is porches and stairs on historic structures. And it says the location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant orna ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Uh, I yeah, would. So that was just that sub part that I was yes. suggesting not applicable. And then there's those other sub parts. And then it says stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ, shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. And stairs and ramps shall be designated in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building design and layout. So stairs, ramps, porches, employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings. Yeah, this one's a little weird because this isn't, they're not adding a porch or stairs. The stairs were already there. Yes. They're just adding the railing. So it's just one of those ones where it's a little funky as to how much of it would really apply to this particular situation. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't just decide it was okay. all not applicable yes. when maybe the committee would disagree. Do you have any feelings on that, Eric? Uh, yeah, I can see how it would not apply, but uh, uh, I, you know, it's not, this is really porches and stairs. The only thing that gets involved with porches and stairs is the octopus. And yep. I don't know how involved I would. Is. I would just call that not applicable because it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really address what's being applied for. I would agree with that. So the main, the two issues that had a split decision on were exterior, de exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. And number 12, was the architectural features. And again, the anything added onto the building shall be considered in the in the uh, existing features, architectural features of the building, 
and again, one of the requirements is that anything added does not obscure any of the architectural features of the building. Um, the hood over the entry does somewhat, but it, it does leave much of it visible. But the, the question again is, everything that's proposed, is that compatible with the characteristics of the, of the existing building or other properties in the district? I keep coming back to the word additions in there that I feel like these are very temporary. Um, new, new construction or alterations. Yeah, and I it's, don't see them as an alteration either. What? I, I, ben, I disagree. I think it is an alteration in the sense that uh, uh, these are uh, not similar materials, uh, and uh, uh, Aaron, a little bit to supply to reply to you is that uh, in the bigger picture of compatibility, maybe it, it is not appropriate to add sculptures of this size and of uh, the materials, which I like. Maybe it is not appropriate on an historic building. Yes. Well, appropriate's a very dangerous word, Eric. Uh, it's art, you know. Uh, it doesn't really sit well with me. <laughs> so I don't know what's appropriate as far as artwork goes. And um, it, 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 but it's, anyway, you know what? I, I it's okay. It's okay. I, I don't. I don't. It, it's obvious where we're headed with this, and I don't want to waste anybody else's time. Um, I, I just Aaron. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, be, before we have any anything irrevocable said, <laughs> I just step in procedurally, um, just so that you're aware, because we haven't really had this discussion yet. If you're disagreeing with what the design review committee is saying, you do have the option to bump this up to the development review board, right? The development review board can step in sure. as 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 sort of a judge. Sure. to take a fresh look. So I'm just letting you know, you do have that option. We very rarely have this kind of, of back and forth, um, but but that is an option after tonight, um, if you want to do that, right? Okay. Um, that's no, there's no guarantee that the development review board would have a different opinion than the design review committee, but we can talk about that um, tomorrow if you want. Um, as what the options are going forward. I do need, as a zoning administrator, I do need the design review committee's input and for them to have a final vote before we close this out tonight. So, um, and again, we are only an advisory committee. Right. And they're just advisory, right? So they give guidance on how either I or the development review board apply the design regulations. Um, and, and, so that's just so you know, <laughs> okay? Sure, I understand and I appreciate that. I guess what I was getting at is like I said in the beginning, if we could take the awning off the board, it seems that the functionality of some of my artwork is confusing people and I get that. And so when we're just simply talking about sculpture and artwork that doesn't necessarily have any functionality, um, maybe it's seen differently. And we, I, I could use that mural on the brick building. I, I, you know, I don't understand how that's different. Um, maybe that could be explained, but that, that's what I was talking about. Taking the awning off the board, I'll just take it down. You know, if that's the big problem here, it sounds like it is. Isn't, well, again, I need your I'd, input on that and your thoughts on that. And you can say we, you know, we're okay with certain parts and not other parts of the application, if that is the conclusion. It's up to Eric. Do you, would you approve any portions of the application? You have the existing two, the Chevy hood, plus the uh, the art on top of the hood. 
and then you have the other piece of art on the next to the corner board in the front of the building. And there's a dragon slash snake, the octopus, and the shark. And then the octopus and the shark on the sides of the building. Do you do you find any of those pieces uh, as alterations compatible with the characteristics of the building or other properties in the district? I'm, I'm thinking, and I haven't disappeared. Uh, not really because of the impact uh, on the historic character of the building. Uh, I would certainly be fine with them uh, as freestanding objects. I have no problem with that at all. Uh, I know they don't work that way, but uh, just for the sake of discussion. And what are your thoughts, Ben? Uh, well, I don't disagree with Aaron in that I don't see a huge distinction between any of the murals that we've chosen to put up on any of the buildings and this sculpture. Um, I do hear the concerns about it falling off the building. I do hear concerns, especially, I think it would fall off the building when the snow fell off the building, or that would be the moment it would fall off the building. And I feel like the snow is the bigger problem than the, uh, than the sculpture itself. Um, I think that these are pieces of art that actually will draw the eye to the building, that people might actually notice some of its historical components that they might not have seen before, uh, because now they're looking at the building in a more unique and possibly critical way, whether they like or dislike the art, they're actually paying attention to the building. So um, that's, I feel okay about putting these things up with some consideration to, which is out of our purview about whether they were to fall off the building, what would happen? So you would be okay with all of the components? Uh, I'm okay, certainly with, yeah, all the components. I do have concerns about the hood from a, from a person that spends time building structural things over people's heads. I have concerns about that one. Uh, but again, I don't feel like that's my, in my role here. And I have a combination of concerns about the, the size and number of pieces of art on the building. Yep, number is a fair concern. That seem to overwhelm the building a little bit as well as the structural issues. And again, if those, if those uh, pieces or the structural components of the overhang, the, the hood, Chevy hood, are not sturdy enough to be acceptable from an engineering and a building code concern, then th that would have to be changed if it were to remain. And that's, Unfortunately, they'd have to come back for an entire, you know, for a, a modification of the application as it is. And based on those, based on the criteria that we are obligated to review projects by, I would, I would find the application as it is unacceptable myself. I hear the concern about number of pieces. Number and size of pieces related to the size of the building. I hear that concern. They are, I mean, the other, the, the artwork on some of the other buildings are either single piece or some, uh, some murals painted on a lower portion of a very, very large building, brick building. And it's only on one side, not three sides of the building. Yep. And it's down on the ground and it's, it doesn't, project out and it doesn't have any safety issues 
I, I just see that as a, as a different, different scale. Yeah, the materials, the paint materials, I mean, we paint buildings, the materials are compatible with the painting as well. Uh, I, I might be uh, uh, less concerned with sculpture on the riverside because that's not a, a you know, it's, a, it's a, a part of the building that has been, it's not a flat plane like the Elm Street side or a primary facade like uh, the Langdon Street side. Uh, Meredith, I have a question. I don't know whether it's related or not, but did uh, you ever figure out the conduits? Uh, I, I haven't, Eric. I've, I've, because last time we talked about that was last Monday and I haven't worked since last Monday. <laughs> uh, Aaron, I have a question. We, re we approved uh, lights, but I particularly the one on the corner, but I believe that was a solar light. And now there's conduit running to it that uh, to me obscures uh, 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 part of the window trim and, and, and that kind of, kind of uh, uh, thing and I don't know when that was installed. Yeah, the solar lights proved ineffective and simply were not working. So we found the same lumens that were approved in what we thought were the same type of lighting. Um, so it's the same light essentially. I, I'm I'm not concerned about that as much as a conduit. Uh, running on the building. Okay, well, we, we were under the impression that it was the lumens that were the, <laughs> it's, it, it, anything very, outside uh, of the building. I, I, I think that uh, with a change that significant, it should have come back to design review. So, Aaron, we'll, we'll, there's, there's a couple of different layers to it. The design review committee needs to look at any changes that have an impact on the outside of the building. So adding the conduit to get to the different light, the lumens and everything is just the zoning permit, the bigger zoning permit. That's something that the DRC doesn't look at. That's something I looked at before I could approve the lights. Um, so it's, well, we'll have to go back and look at the, what the permit actually approved if it was specifically for a solar light. Um, but, but outside of that, um, the, you know, we've only got three members of a five member panel um, and we need for, with three, you have to have all three votes in favor um, to get the design review committee's approval. Or I should say maybe a, a design review committee's uh, yeah. Blessing. Approval. Blessing. Yeah. Blessing. Yes. But what did I, I still need I, to do a vote? We're voting on. Pardon, Eric? I missed what we're voting we're, on. They, have, they haven't, there hasn't been a vote yet. I was just trying to make sure that everybody was aware that yep. all three of you are going to have to agree on a final recommendation or blessing or not. For, sure. Go ahead. Eric, before you asked about lumens, you were talking about how you felt that putting art on the riverside was more acceptable to you. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Well, I think the, the, you know, the proposal is the octopus on the riverside and uh, that kind of uh, you know, is and protected by the porch. And uh, I think more appropriate for the riverside. It's just a, a, a thought. That's all. Yeah. I mean, I agree that I think that that is a place to be able to put some an object like that that is out of harm's way and is possibly a pretty difficult thing to attach to a building, but I think it speaks to the river. I think it speaks to the, the piece of art on the other side attached to the Lachlan Smith
kind of rock dangler. And um, I think there's reason that that should be found acceptable. And what about the two pieces on the front of the building and the hood? I hear your concerns about it being overwhelming and it and I feel like I can hear that there's too many pieces that that is a that is a fair concern that I hear. It's a combination of the number of pieces and the size of them in relation to the building. Yep. Steve? Yes. Just a, a thought. Um, given the, and this is something that Aaron can say yay or nay to as well, um, given some of the input and especially the thought about potentially pairing back some of the pieces or maybe shifting some of them, who knows, uh, would the committee be open to having Aaron come back in two weeks with perhaps a modified application? I'm certainly open to it. Yes, yeah, I, yes. That would that would certainly be acceptable. And again, some either Chris Lumber or, or somebody who can say that that you know the supports for that overhang and that that is the final design for those supports that will hold a thousand pounds or whatever the load requirement is yep. because it doesn't make any sense to approve something that's not going to be acceptable code wise yep. because then that design has to come back i would agree with that too i, I would be concerned about any fat fastenings uh the load on the shark uh, could be significant with snow coming off the roof uh and uh even the little piece on the front uh i don't know what to call the creature but uh uh that has the potential of, of falling and i think parts of that are are hard. i i would need to have somebody be very clear that the fastenings are appropriate for the other the other issue on the front of the building with the uh whatever you call that snake or sea creature or whatever you use to describe it. Uh, the location of that should be moved to make sure it does not interfere or obstruct any of the architectural features. Again, that's a requirement as well. And e even the corner board uh, should be, should not be covered by any of the artwork. Uh, if that was moved around to the riverside where it's not, like not uh, possible for it to fall on public way, I'd be happy with that. Again, the art should added to a building should complement the building and not overwhelm it or create safety issues. And again, I know that some of that is subjective, but if you would be willing to come back to another meeting with maybe some modifications, uh, I would probably take anything off, leave everything off the building on the Elm Street side again because of the issues with snow load coming off that building. In the past, heavy ice has come off of that enough that it could have actually have killed somebody. Fortunately, it's frequently been barricaded to keep people from going by. And I w myself wouldn't add anything to that site that projects in any way, shape, or form uh, that would, could be either ripped off the building or cause any further safety concerns. Aaron, one of the things the uh, committee uh, does, not as frequently as I'd like it, but we can have informal discussions about this without presenting a formal application. And I don't know what the what the fee deal is on coming back for a second time. Uh, oh, no, no, no fee for coming back in two weeks if we just say that this is continued and we we move it forward to two weeks from now. Um, and then for future projects, definitely you can come before the design review committee for like an informal discussion before you submit an actual application with fees. Um, you know, I think here part of the part of it was that. You gotten stuff up and then we needed to get everything in before you put up more artwork um, and get get you before the committee. 
I, I would, uh, uh, I think the, uh, the conduit is not part of this application. It was put up on the front of the building, but I think that needs to come back. I've got to go. I've got to go back and look at how the permit was actually worded, Eric. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm just concerned that it it obscures architectural features. Yep, I hear you. Would you be willing to come back in a couple of weeks with some modifications? Um, it's not that I'm not willing. I just go back to my previous question of. Uh, if you're saying that the Riverside is the only allowable place for artwork, then that's what I'm looking for. That, you know, I'd want to make sure I don't want to apply for anything that you're obviously not going to approve. So that's, um, if that's what you're telling me, I'd like to know that in advance, and then I would happily reapply. Yeah, I, th I think that's the part of the uh, the informal discussions that we've had with a number of applicants uh, when questions come up about things. And then you get an idea of what we're thinking and uh, we can have a, a less formal discussion about it. Okay, sure, that sounds fair. Um, so Steve, it sounds like if they, ha if Aaron and Therese could come up with documentation um, about the, the awning slash canopy. Like that would be one thing you would potentially be looking for. And I know that Chris Lumber is looking for that as well to be able to issue a building permit for that. He wasn't gonna issue a building permit is my understanding without some more documentation about I, that being able to withstand snow load. Yeah, Meredith, I. I... I really don't think that's going to happen. We can't afford okay. it here. I'm just going to have to take it down. So okay. uh, I just sorry. I can't afford that. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, I hear you. Um, uh, so, uh, so any future awnings or anything you want yeah. to put over that? I'm yes, sure you yes. talk to Chris first. I get, I got the message. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> cause I mean, I agree an, an awning there would be smart to protect those steps from, especially from ice. Cause that's, you don't always see that. Um, yeah. And then you are all talking maybe smaller potential art installations, not quite as many, and the river side being more, more prefer a more preferable side of the building is what it sounded like, especially from Steve and Eric. Okay. Does that sound like a good summary? I think so. I know, Ben, you were sort of an outlier yep. between you three. And then we may also have additional members in two weeks. Who are attending and i would just throw this out eric and aaron that i would be happy to meet someday to do an informal review and just kind of look at the building and look at some ideas and understand some of your methods for attachment uh more thoroughly in an informal review if that was helpful or desired or I, i'd be happy to do that so Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. As long as everybody reports on it at the next meeting. <laughs> right. If it's between now and, and then. And again, um, and there's, there's only two of you. <laughs> so we don't have a quorum. <laughs> right. And again, one of the advantages, obviously, of mounting things on the riverside is that you're under an existing roof with supports that have, uh, have withstood the test of time so far. And then there are no issues with in, in no structural issues uh, with snow loads or other attachments because you're un underneath that upper porch, which gives you a lot of protection and, and ease of access as well. So if you would be willing to come back in a couple of weeks with the proposal to move some of the items, uh, I, would, I would like to see you back. Okay, sounds fair. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. So right, we'll thanks, folks. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Right, so, so that'll be continued to January eighteenth. Yes. Same time. It's a Tuesday, Aaron.
Okay. Uh, because Monday's a holiday and the city hall will be closed. So it'll be Tuesday, January 18th, 530. I'm just going to give you that back on yep. unfilled and un. All right. Luckily, we don't have a development review board meeting at seven because we have half an hour to get through two applications. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we'll move. Aaron, I'll be, I'll be in the office tomorrow if you feel like calling. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank thank you for your willingness to try to make some accommodations and come back. We appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye bye. Okay, bye. goodbye. You can go forward to the next application for 51 Berlin Street, John and Maria Quadros. Uh, uh, is someone here oh. to describe the application? I'm here. Lori? This is, yeah, this is Lori Burgard from Accelerate Permits. Okay. Do you have her name? Yep. Okay. Good. Go ahead and describe your application for the change. So what they would like to do is remove the existing drive-through menu board um, for the Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and do a replacement. It's going to be um, a new menu board that's mounted on a canopy, which it also offers um, like a ordering speaker. Um, and then the new menu board would be mounted on that canopy. Uh the menu board is mounted sort of against the wall on the canopy? Um, actually, um, it, the structure um, is um, mounted um, through the ground. It's not attached to the building. Okay. So here's the, the picture of what the new one would look like um, with the, the roof on it. Um, so the current one is attached I think pretty much right to the building. And here's yeah. this new structure. And is that the sort of speakers in the middle with a double screen, one on either side, Lori? Yeah, exactly. Actually, um, the existing is not mounted to the building. It is oh, mounted okay. to the ground. It has a steel cage, so it's bolted um, to that steel cage. And so it, it's standalone. Oh, okay, thank you. From a practical standpoint, I, I like the idea of an awning. It will avoid getting my car wet. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you have your window open. So basically, you're just replacing what's there now with a little different design and some improvements in the uh, in the in the uh, visual yeah it's it, it's an upgraded uh the new menu board is up upgraded with new technology yes and then the awning overhead to keep the uh the rain and snow out of your window while you're trying to order your food yes Is the is the awning roof the red is shown in the diagram? Yes. And that's an accurate color representation. Yes, as far as I know, it is. So okay. it's like the is it going to be sort of the Dunkin' Donuts sort of orangey color? Yes. Yes. Any committee members have any comments, questions, suggestions of any kind? No, I'm fine, fine with me. Okay. I'm sure Dunkin' Donuts has thought about it, but 10 feet feels low for an awning if I'm trying to drive my truck through there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not my problem. Well, I, I guess you have a large truck, you have to go inside. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> I hope people with tall roof racks 
Yeah. <laughs> Realize, do you have a do you have a sign that indicates the height of the awning in case that became a problem? Sure. So on the side of the awning, it actually does list um, the the clearance. Um, you know, just like in any other time you do a drive through. So right. it does show the clearance as being ten feet. Okay. Point. That doesn't help much on covered bridges, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would hope anyone in a box truck would park in the parking lot and walk in. Yeah. Have yeah. you have you had trucks drive through the drive through? Um, you know what? I've never heard of anyone um, having an issue with Dunkin' Donuts. I have run into, in my experience, more the Walgreens pharmacy drive throughs but <laughs> never for a Dunkin' Donuts canopy. Okay. Too bad they don't make those overhangs with a, uh, a breakaway, so <laughs> if somebody hit it, it, it would actually rotate rather than break. That's a good idea. But on some of the covered bridges, they're thinking about putting up steel beams so it <laughs> lowers the truck enough that they can get through. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze it down. <laughs> oh. And again, that's not a design issue as much as, I mean, a breakaway would be nice in case the thing would just r rotate instead of breaking off, but I mean, hopefully people read read the sign for the for the height. We we can't fix stupid drivers anyway. No. Nope. Okay, unless anybody has anything else, we can run through the criteria for this one. For new construction, again, this is exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. New construction shall be considered to be compatible if the materials used possess a kind or type that are appropriate to the district. Materials selected shall either fit the neighborhood context of the proposed building and or reflect the nature and use of the structure. Acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Uh, acceptable at this location. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse and visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. The location of this new board on the side of the building is acceptable. And outdoor lighting fixtures, the structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. This signboard at this location on the side of the building is acceptable. And there's a criteria for new buildings only, accessory buildings and structures. Well, so it's accessory structures. This is kind of an accessory structure. Okay. Sorry, we'll I wasn't call it mic. an accessory structure. New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or alter the integrity of the existing building and proposed new building. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Benjamin Chain. Sure. And Steve Everett. So the vote is three in favor. Approved. And I'll let you describe the next step for them. Uh, so, Lori, because there weren't any comments or any tweaks to the recommend on the recommendation form to the project, um, we will get this permit sent out in the next couple of days. Um, do hold on, I'm trying to go back to my form just to double check. Uh, so. We actually have you as the only contact for this. Um, maybe you could email me with who we should actually send the permit to, because the, there's going to be a permit, and then there's going to be a blue notice card that needs to get posted at the Dunkin' Donuts location. Um, so we could have somebody from there come and pick it up, or we could mail it. But I don't think you want us to mail the permit and the blue notice card to Arizona. 
Um, actually, you know what, I'll email you because I represent the uh, sign company. Okay. And so I will send you my project manager's information. Perfect. So it can be sent to them. Awesome. And uh, do you have, I had my email address up at the beginning and it's on the planning department website, but do you have it otherwise? I do have it. Yes, I do. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Lori. Great. Thank Lori, you so I much. I think we have the record for our longest Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> We have probably hit the record for the longest Zoom for DRC so far. Thank you very much for your application and good luck with your project. Thank you very much. We can move on to the next application for 118 Main Street, Owner Malone Properties, Hugo's Restaurant Group. Um, and this is the review of the placement of three new awning signs with lighting. And is someone here from Hugo's to describe the application? Hi, this is Tom Green. I'm here and I'm also joined by Erica uh, from Wood and Wood who is doing the sign work. And so I'm going to defer to her for most questions since they're a bit above my pay grade. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, Erica, just so you know, I didn't um, circulate the the slight updates you sent us about the sign change. I do have it electronically so I can share it so that they can see about that one um, awning about the piano bar being tweaked, um, that sign. Um, but I went through the numbers and it doesn't change anything for the larger zoning aspect of it. Um, so we'll be able to show it to the, the DRC members great, when we get great. there. Great. So you go ahead and can describe what's up. Oh, great. Okay. So uh, thanks for having us tonight. Happy New Year. Um, we are, the location is um, Hugo's Restaurant. We are doing a new uh, three parts. Well, it's two, 1A and B and number two. The first is the actual fascia sign. We have one large fascia sign that goes across the front of the building that you can probably see on several different angles that we provided. That's on um, the building, right? Not on the pardon? building. That's on the awning, right? Correct. Yeah, There's the a metal, well, the left part, which is the second part, is the awning sign. Um, so to talk about the first part, which is has Hugo's bar and grill across the top, there's a metal structure there that we are going to attach, uh, eight inch die bond to have that here, very thin, um, with, uh, some particular screws in which I need to call them out hexon screws that'll be attached to the already established metal frame that's there. There'll be two logos on that part. One is very long and thin. It's 12, uh, 24 feet by nine by 14 inches. That's the one you see across the top right there, Hugo's bar and grill, correct? Yes. There's that metal piece. So it's just gonna be that front part that's gonna be that very thin eighth inch thick yeah. aluminum die bond, which is a die bond. Uh, uh, aluminum composite, which is used incredibly often. The second part is uh, the Hugo's where it goes above the door, bar and grill. Uh, that area is 14 feet by 11, as far as I have here. I'm sorry, eight by eight by three, I believe, and 14 inches as well for that logo area. The high okay. point is 28 inches on the V top above there. Uh -huh. Again, die bond. Uh, it's going to be painted. It's going to be black and white painted flat um, on that, that logo itself, plus the line bars. The total square footage uh, that we are allowed that I'm understood is 132 square feet. This itself, uh, including the awning sign, will be 13.79 square feet. Uh, so that gives us a bit of flexibility. Uh, the second area is the Hugo sign. I'm sorry, let's go back and just discuss the lighting. I'm sure you're going to ask me about that. We have three lighting, uh, gooseneck, custom gooseneck lights 
um, that are going to be as well attached to that metal bar. And that again has the um, hex head self tapping screw. Uh, the same goes for the Hugo's light. It's an individual gooseneck. Uh, that too, it has a custom gooseneck and it's got a powder coated black flat light reflector. Obviously you can see it bears down, curves in by the drawing that we provided. Um, the lighting that can go in there, I sent a spec sheet. It can be of any lumen of the choice of the city's choice or of course the owner's choice. And I sent a spec sheet that discusses that. Their LED lights. Um, then uh, I guess on the awning sign, which will not have any lighting, that's over to the left. That's an already existing awning. We're going to take off that material, replace it with a uh, canvas, a very strong canvas that's going to have uh, the Hugo's painted uh, right flat as well on there, black and white. Total square footage for everything that we're doing, 1379. 100 square feet, which um, I think Tom can speak a little bit more about than I. There is a restaurant sign that's above the rest of the building that is 100 square feet, um, which is included on a 132. So 132 minus 100, we have 32 left. That's 13.79 is what we have. Yeah, just about the restaurant sign at Meredith's advice, we, we include it as signage, even though it's a historic sign that's been there since the, I don't know how long, Steve, you probably know better than I do, uh, but it's been there been there as long as I've been in Montpelier. Um, and we had the loan properties go up and measure it and they measured at, a, at uh, exactly 100 square feet. Thank you for doing that. Uh, yeah, using, using the criteria that Meredith gave to us on measuring right. around the letters and the white space around it. So um, that, that's where we came up with those figures. Great, thank you for doing that, by the way. Thanks, not getting, making me do it. That's <laughs> a landmark in Montpelier, that sign. I've lived here 45 years, and it was old then when I moved. <laughs> <laughs> used to be the lobster pot. I remember. Yeah, I came, I came here I came here in 93, and the lobster pot was still here. So, I remember. I, one quick question. Over the long sign in the middle, Two of the drawings show three goosenecks, and one drawing shows two goosenecks. Is is that? I'm assuming there are three goosenecks. Oh, um, so at um, I guess I can only say that we did two to get this rolling. We have two designs that we have not come to uh, uh, confirmation on. So we've uh, provided the other the smaller version and the two goosenecks, but we kind of applied through the larger version just in case Tom and his team choose to do the three goosenecks. Uh, okay. Uh, that again, I get, we were uh, trying to do a time thing and uh, get this in for the last week. Pre-Christmas, we haven't kind of confirmed anything yet. So okay. um, if that's a problem, I'm happy to pull one. And if something changes, reapply. Right. No, that's that's fine. You can we could do an option if everyone finds it acceptable. We could do an option for either one. Yep. And then uh, I don't know if you saw when I had the share screen up. Let me show you. Well, the they sent an alternative for the awning, and I'll put it back up for you. That has slightly different wording. Oh, thank you. Um, where it has a little bit extra and it talks about it being the piano bar. Um, Upstairs and huge yep. piano bar. So that's a little different from what you got in the original oh, packet. Right there, yes. That was- See that, one. Eric? Yep. Um, so it really, in, in you know, my point of view, it doesn't really change it much. It added a little bit of, of text, but we aren't really, you know, you guys can talk about the color of the text and the font yes. used and the size, but- <laughs> We can't really talk about the actual verbiage being used. Well, it's actually it's actually a good directional because I don't know how many times we've been on the patio and watched people go to the the door 
before all the time which was not open because it, it, it that upstairs restaurant had been closed for years <laughs> people kept trying to go to the door and they said how do we get into the building right. <laughs> oh that's funny excellent side sideline use of directionals question i have about the lights are they well shielded so that you're not going to see the lights themselves from across the street yes um i did send um an actual i don't know if i can put this up i don't know if you guys got this but i sent a cross notion so it will be shielded enough and it can be if you see on here it's tempered great all the way in, so it's going to be reflecting kind of right back onto the sign itself if you give me just a second, Erica, I'll share it. I just, I have, I took, I got Sorry, just, Erica. no, 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 it's okay. I got the, I, I'm making sure I pulled the most recent ones you sent um, versus the ones that were in the packet, even though I think this is exactly the same as what's yes. in the printed packet. It shows Correct. And it's, yep. As far as we know, it's in line with the other lighting that we have done in the Montpelier. And as, as you walk down the sidewalk, um, is this going to shine in anybody's eyes or anything that the fixture is recessed far enough back in there? It, well, it's 22 inches off uh, the building. And then the curvature will, ha you know, in yeah. itself, it will vie down right on the sign. It should not reflect. And we can always change lumens if it's uh, to directly reflect. Uh, I didn't worry about it people going down the sidewalk and getting in their uh, their eyes That's being blinded awesome. yes of course yeah. um my best answer to that is how it's been designed under our consciousness of what you're speaking direct lighting right onto the signing sign itself yeah. is what we're going for we don't want to light the the sidewalk frankly we want all the attention on the sign okay I think the size of the canopy at the on the light itself, plus the angle, uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to throw much light down on the sidewalk uh, below it. It looks like it's, I mean, it's aimed right at the sign. So sounds good to me. Sounds good. Any questions or comments from any other committee members, Eric? Oh, no. Okay, I'll run down through the criteria. Signs in the design control overlay district, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. This location is acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. Uh, it, it, there's only one tenant, but with, and the locations are designated appropriately. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. This is acceptable at this location. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building, acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the approximate scale, appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades of historic buildings shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity or recover or impact character defining architectural features, acceptable. And lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively acceptable all in favor of the application with the changes for the piano bar uh speak and your name with the option for the smaller size sign on the big yes. section if they want it and, it, and i can okay. put that and, and thank you there's an option 
So there are two or three lights. Yep, and the two or three That's lights the over the center. Has the option, or I should say has, has the choice of options for the lettering size and number of light fixtures. on the long center portion of the sign. So again, the applicant has a choice of options for the lettering size and number of light fixtures on the long center portion of the sign grouping. And then again, the, the final application is for the piano bar. So yeah, that, that, is, that is accepted as, as proposed. All in favor, speak your names. Benjamin Cheney. Eric. And Steve Everett. So it is approved, all three in favor. Thank you. Really awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time, everybody. Thank so you. before you sign off, before you sign off, um, because the actual larger zoning permit, I need to know what the lights are going to be. Um, when do you think you're going to make a choice on that middle sign? <laughs> because I'll talk I to, uh, Tom and I can speak in the morning, I think. Okay, or, or just in the next day or two. I've got, to, I've got to do an administrative site plan report, of course, um, of which course. will be pretty quick because it's really just the lights. Okay. Um, but to okay. be able to analyze that and what I'm going to approve, I just kind of got to know. <laughs> he tells me right now. If he knows right now, I can make it. I think we'll see the three lights and the bigger sign. Three lights and the bigger sign it is, folks. Okay. okay. Awesome. 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 Uh, so... And we that, will need a signature from you guys on from from well who do we have is tom um yeah. on the recommendation form so we'll i'll scan that to you and you can scan it back that sounds great um and then hopefully get the the permit issued in the next couple of days i just got to do the site plan report um and are you gonna want that mailed to you or do you want to just come by and pick up the permit when it's ready i can come by and pick it up Happy to do okay that. we'll let you know great thank you so much so thanks tom that. Thank you. The larger lettering and three lights is is, what is, end up is, is fine. And we, <laughs> Sorry and to make you write them. all that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. No, this is that's that got you those recommendations. So that's perfect. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate. I appreciate it. That's a projected opening. Uh, we're we're hoping uh, early February, but you know, it, it, supply and chain issues are our main our main obstacle <laughs> right now. Yeah. Getting literally getting ice machines is the hardest thing in the world. So. Oh. As soon as we get ice machines in, we'll be you open. You don't need a machine in February. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to see you all there too. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Thank you very much and good luck with your project. The next thing on the agenda is to review and approve the minute of the uh 1220 meeting but uh, only two of us are here today who were at that meeting so we'll have to table that till the next meeting yep. and again our next meeting is tuesday january the 18th does anyone have anything else to add at this point or do or do i hear a motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor of adjournment speak your name ben Eric and Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.